Stay tuned for air gun detected. to another episode of Air Gun Detectives. Today we're going to take the mystery out of the Diana LP8 carbine. This is a German made gun by Diana but before we get started can I please remind you to um, hit the button down there at the bottom and subscribe. Um, if you'd like to be notified of our videos popping out just hit that little bell right there and please we like feedback. Give us a thumbs up if you can if you like what we're doing here um, and we'll go from there. Okay back to business here. The Diana LP8 carbine. Okay, obviously it doesn't look just like this when you get it. I added a few accessories to it. It looks more like this. Okay, that's how you get it. But you do get the gun. Um, obviously, no bipod or barrel clamp. And you get a Diana a red dot sight with it. In fact, if you watch my Webley uh, video with the Webley um, pistol, uh, I actually put the red dot on that. I was using it on this. This gun actually shoots very precise, and I wanted to put a scope on it so I could go out a little bit farther distance. What's uh, interesting with this gun, it comes with a rear sight, a rear fiber optic sight, but yet they don't put any sight on the front. Now, if that's something that you want to do, this could always be drilled and tapped, and a sight could be put on the end of this. But this does make the cocking quite nice, because it gives you a nice muzzle brake to grip to to cock the gun. The grips on this, these are aftermarket wood grips. Normally they come with just the plastic black grips. Good looking grips, but the woods are kind of a nice upgrade and you can get those online. Um, in addition, this is a spring piston, you know, as opposed to a gas piston. This is a spring piston gun. Um, this does come with a case. It's actually a pretty nice case if you look at that. It's a .177 caliber. They're claiming it can shoot up to 700 feet per second. Usually when they say up to 700 feet per second, basically they're saying you put an alloy pellet in there and you'll get 700 feet per second. We're going to test it and we'll see what it, it really gets. This is, as we were saying, a German-made gun. It's kind of nice. It comes with the, the little stock on here. You see, I put a piece of foam rubber on this. You can get that at any hardware store. That's just for insulating pipes, but it's actually nice to rest your cheek on. Because if not, you're just going to be resting your cheek on this the metal rail here so that kind of pads it up a little bit so I also put a barrel clamp on this um, with a little picatinny rail and that way I could put a bipod on here or you can put any type of accessories you just have to watch what you're doing so when you cock the gun you have clearance so it doesn't um, hit the grip but we'll, we'll demonstrate that so anyway they're claiming as we said up to 700 feet per second we're gonna find out what the true world um, velocity is on this gun we're also gonna test it for our accuracy and then, uh, of course, have a little fun and do some plinking with it. So the gun retails for about $350, and you can get it on sale. I've seen it on sale. And that, again, comes with a case, comes with a red dot sight, comes with a plastic grip. So the rest of this is, is an upgrade. So let's uh, move on to the next section, and uh, let's see how this gun does out in the field. Okay, we're here with our Diana our uh, LP8 tactical carbine and we're gonna see what type of feet per second we actually get out of it. Manufacturer claims up to 700 feet per second but usually when they do that they're claiming like probably a light alloy pellet some type. We're gonna actually shoot the uh, Meister Kuglins, the RWS is 7.0 grain because those are the ones that actually perform best in this gun as far as target practice. So let's see what type of velocity we get out of the pellets that we're actually gonna shoot out of this gun. We're gonna do five shots over the crony and uh, see what type of uh, velocity we get. It's uh, it's in the low 80s right now, not that that would overly affect a spring piston gun, but let's see what we get. All right, shot number one. All right, 623. Shot number two. An error, of course. Why would we not get an error? These chronographs always have to be some type of pain. Okay, 621. That's shot number two, as far as recording goes. Okay, let's do a third one over the chrono. 619. Okay, 
617. And 631. That one jumped up there. Try another one. Now this gun is fairly new. I don't have a whole lot of rounds through it. So that does explain force and change in velocity in a 629 there. So you see what our average is. So not bad. Lead pellets. We're in the uh, you know the lower sixes, but uh, that's very respectable. Let's move on to the next session. Do a little accuracy test with our LP8 carbine. Um, we're back our usual about 20 yards, and uh, let's see how well this gun does. I'm going to shoot five shots, um, and uh, we'll see what type of grouping we get. Yeah, I'm shooting off a little bipod because I told you guys I enjoy shooting off the bipods. So let's see what type of accuracy we can get. So let's see here. Oh, it's not bad. Not a bad shot at all. All right. Let's go for shot number two. It's the only thing, dealing with these little 177 caliber pellets, they are so small. All right. That's two. I know what you're thinking right now. This is a very accurate gun. I can't argue with that one. It is. It's a very accurate gun. And with the trigger, right about three pounds, just under. It's not too shabby. All right, shot number three. Okay. Shot number four. Shot number four. And last but not least. Yeah, I'm trying not to screw this group up for you guys. Okay, and number five. Our last and final shot. And there you go, the German-made Diana LP8. Not too shabby. And that was the uh, Meisterkugeln pellets. We like shooting the Meisterkugelns out of these. The um, 7.0 grain works quite well. All right, let's move on to our next uh, section. All right, we got our LP8 here, and we're going to test out um, the trigger weight. We'll see what type of um, pull weight we can expect out of these. Okay, we got our trusty Lyman trigger gauge here. Let's give it a pull and see what we got. Okay, it's just under three pounds, 2.93 ounces, 2.93 ounces. Now, don't forget, I put a little bit lighter spring in there, so it's probably just a hair bit lighter than you're going to get out of the box. But as you can see, for minimum work, you can get that under a three pound trigger. So let's move on to our next section. All right, there's nothing like a little plinking with our Diana LP8. Now I'll let you know off camera, I tried to go back 35, 40 yards. This gun does not shoot 35, 40 yards back. Yeah, you could arc a pellet and knock over an aluminum can if that's what you want to do. But there's absolutely no foot-pounds of energy at the end of that. Realistically, the maximum distance for this um, gun is 25 yards. We are at exactly 25 yards. Let me show you. There you go. That's what we're going to be shooting at. And we're 25 yards back. You can see those little targets there. And when you're shooting this type of distance, you want to have a little bit of foot bounds of energy, especially if you're trying to clear rodents or doing something of that nature. But 25 yards is the max for this gun. If you want accuracy and you want some foot pounds of energy. Like I said, from 35 yards away, you can actually arc the pellet 
and hit an aluminum can or something like that. So those people that tell you, oh, well, I can shoot 30, 40 yards, it's not realistic. You want to knock over a can? Yes. But if you're talking about actually target practice, that's different. Okay, we're going to use our Meister, group, our Meister Kuglin. It's always a tough word. Our 7.0 grain, um, 0.177. And let's see how we do from 25 yards out. Yes, once again, I'm shooting with my bipods because I want accuracy. All right, we're going to start from the right side and work our way to the left. So we're going to start with a shotgun shell. And I would say that was a good hit. All right. And you notice we're hitting some pretty heavy, or shooting at some pretty heavy looking steel targets here. Let's go for the big guy. See if we can knock it over. Because remember, we're only shooting a seven grain pellet. Reminder, anytime you cock a brake barrel, leave your hand on it just in case of the rare time that this thing could go flying back up, whether you bump the trigger, somehow release the sear. So that's just always safety when you're loading it. Keep your hand on there. All right, let's go for the little piece of PVC right there on the right side. And I would say that was a hit. We do have a little bit of wind going today, you can probably see, which is gonna affect this little seven grain pellet a lot more than you know, like a 22 caliber or something of that nature, even a heavier grain. All right, orange egg. Well, that was a miss. And I might contribute that to the wind. Then again, it could be just the shooting on camera. Actually, no, the wind is actually moving pretty good. So let's try that again. There we go. And... Last but not least, the last little white egg. Keep in mind, we're 25 yards out. This is only a seven grain pellet. So this thing actually is doing pretty good. And in the wind. There you go. The Diana LP8 carbine. I'd say it did pretty well. Let's move on to the next section. Well, let's wrap up the Diana LP8 carbine with our conclusion. Uh, it was a lot of fun testing this. It's a pretty neat gun overall. Um, let's talk about the negatives first. I always like to throw the negatives out there. Negatives. Comes with a rear sight, but no front post. I know you could add one to it, but that's a negative. They should give you a, a front post. It's nothing but drilling a hole, tapping in a front sight, and that would be it. So for those of you then would have the option that you can shoot it with an open sight. Um, the other negative, this um, carbine stock, it's very uncomfortable unless you put a pad on there. And like I said, you can go to a, a hardware store and get some foam and just put that on there and it actually takes that problem away. But you would think at the price point of this gun, because you're talking about you know almost $350, that um, they would do something just a little bit better than that. But other than that, the accuracy, phenomenal. We're talking about the positive stuff. Think about it, we shot um, under a half inch at 20 yards group, five yards um, shot. And I had um, some 10 shot groups, I'll show you there. And look at that, I mean, it's just amazing. So the accuracy is definitely, definitely there. Again, as we demonstrated, I would not shoot this gun more than 25 yards. Uh, I mean, that's if you want a nice, accurate, and you want some foot-pounds of energy. And did you know, um, I don't know if you know this, but the air gun people seem to be so big on feet per second, feet per second, which really is the number one um, factor in an air gun, is foot-pounds of energy. In other words, what is the kinetic energy of the pellet that is being projected? And there's a lot of factors that go into that. What happens is the weight of the pellet. The weight of the pellet from what is the feet per energy when it leaves the barrel, and what is it 20 yards um, down towards your target. Um, a lot of people don't realize this. Sometimes the heavier pellet maintains that foot pounds of energy longer because it takes longer for that pellet to slow down. So it just depends. You'll have to experiment with some different pellets. But this gun, as we saw, um, averaged about 623 feet per second. And with the seven grain pellets, we're looking 
a little bit over four pounds of energy. Now, they consider anything over about three and a half lethal, so you could actually um, do some pest control with this, um, things like that. But, um, and then you know that's just the measure of kinetic injury. The universal term for that you'll see sometimes is joules. Joules is a universal uh, international term for their foot pounds of energy, how many joules. In fact, some guns are restricted in some of these other countries based on how many joules it is. Anyway, back to this gun. Um, the trigger on this, you saw um, I was getting under three pounds. It comes standard with about three and a half pounds. I, if you look at this, I just changed the spring in this. I put a lighter spring in it, and that's all I did. Now, if you want to do that, you're on your own. Um, um, like I said, I wouldn't mess with this gun unless you absolutely know you're, what you're doing or you have a uh, professional gunsmith doing it. I felt comfortable with it. I put a little bit lighter spring in it, and you saw it knocked three quarters of a pound off the trigger. Um, other than that, it's not a bad trigger. It's three and a half pounds um, as it is. Um, one other thing, the red dot sight that it comes with, it's okay, but if you're going to go more, you know, more than like 10, 15 yards, um, the dot's not fine-tuned enough. That's why I went with uh, the aftermarket scope because I wanted to be just a little bit more accurate. And if you saw, we were getting we were getting actually some really good groups um, out of this. Um, German-made gun. Um, you can tell when you're cocking it how tight it is. Now I put the barrel clamp on this so I could shoot it with the um, with the bipods. Obviously, you can you can rest it. Um, you could also put uh, little different accessories on this if you want, but these barrel clamps are very, very inexpensive. Now, that's something if you want to do that, that's entirely up to you. There's just some options there. Um, again, 25 yards, about maximum distance. You want to go beyond that, you know, your arc and a pellet. So how would I rate this gun overall? Um, German made, comes with the case, comes with a little red dot sight. It's getting four and a half stars four and a half stars um, and we as you saw we also I forgot to mention um, we did the most accurate pellets I found was the Meister Kuglins the seven grains however and I go through a lot of pellets I mean just take a look at this this is how many pellets I go through trying to find the best pellets for these various guns because people don't realize it but that a specific pellet gun is very picky and it likes certain pellets where maybe another gun likes um, another pellet but the guns are all different, so finding that special pellet is to get the best performance out of, out of um, your air gun. So with that, I thank you for tuning in to another episode of Air Gun Detectives. Remember, this is where we take the mystery out of the air gun. Until next time.